Recording Academy, software setup and install. In this video, we're taking a look at PreSonus Studio One Pro. I have uninstalled it from my computer, so now we can install it together. I'm gonna walk you through the installation process and give you a few tips along the way to get the most out of PreSonus Studio One. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, first and foremost, you're gonna to wanna to go to my.presonus.com. If you don't already have an account with my.presonus.com, make sure you create your account. This is gonna be great for if you're making any software purchases, if you want to upgrade or you get any free downloads in the future, you wanna have a My Presonus account. So make sure you have that set up and then log into your account as soon as it's ready. Once you've logged into your my.presonus.com account, you should be able to see any products that you already have registered to your account. So the first place you wanna go is to register products. If you purchased a PreSonus audio interface, please make sure that you register the product because often they're gonna come with some sort of software trial version or may even come with some plugins. You never know what you're gonna get, so make sure you have it registered. Also, when you're looking to get support in the future, your audio interface, if it's from PreSonus, it should have some sort of serial number or product number that you can register, and then it will show up as you've purchased it. So if you need advice or customer service in the future, it should be able to reference your specific device. But as you can see, I've got many different products on the screen. I've been running with Studio One for quite some time, all the way back to version three, purchased in 2016. Uh, this page right here will essentially give you all of your products. You can, by and large, you can go by and download older versions of PreSonus Studio One. So again, as soon as you register your product, make sure you hold on to your account stuff. We're of course gonna be downloading the newest version of PreSonus Studio One, Studio One Pro version seven. So I'm simply gonna click this download installer right here on the left side of the screen. All right, then you're gonna to wanna to go to your downloads folder and open up the installation file. Simply drag and drop Studio One seven into your applications folder. This will create a shortcut so we can go to your applications folder or your start menu whenever you need to open up Studio One. Now navigate to your program files or your applications folder and select Studio One Seven. Go ahead and open up the program. Now you have the end user license agreement. Just click agree, I accept. Click allow. Now PreSonus Studio One is gonna be scanning your system for third-party plugins. If you have not purchased any audio plugins in the past, this should be a quick process for you. I've got a vast amount of virtual instruments and plugins, so my installation is gonna take a little bit longer than normal. But once this process is done, you should be able to jump into Studio One relatively quickly. And right, now we're gonna be given a guide around the software. Let's go ahead and look through this as well. The artist profile, you wanna set up an artist profile, your picture, you can drag and drop whatever you want into this. Whenever you create a new song, it will have all of this metadata, like basically the picture and the artist name, it'll be put onto your song. So you may just wanna leave this blank. If you work with different artists, it may be kind of a hassle to go through and change the artist profile every time you're recording a song. Personally, you can just leave it blank, you'll be just fine. Now the audio device, we do need to switch this because right now it's locked into my Dell monitor and I need that to say Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Whatever audio interface you're using that needs to show up under setup, which we'll get to that in just a moment. External devices would be like this MIDI controller if you have any electronic keyboards that are being plugged in via a USB cable or some sort of MIDI to USB adapter, it will need to show up there. We'll go through that in just a little bit. All right, you can use quick switch if you wanna to switch to different documents or projects. This section in here will be able to create a new project or open a project that we've already been working on. Then obviously you can look at different tutorials from PreSonus if you wanna check those out as well. Okay, so like I mentioned, we need to get our audio interface set up first and foremost. So down here at the bottom, if it doesn't have your audio interface displayed, make sure your audio interface is plugged in and ready to go. You can simply click where it has the name of whatever audio is selected. Click this drop down menu next to playback device, audio setup, playback device. Make sure it has your audio interface selected. 
and then we'll select the Scarlett 2x2 for my recording device. So your playback device, whatever you're gonna be listening to audio through, and then your recording device, whatever audio interface you're using to record music with. If you're just using your laptop, which I don't recommend you use, uh, you can select under playback device, you can select the MacBook Pro speakers, or you can plug in headphones to your laptop. It should show up, show up as external headphones there. And then for recording device, you can use your MacBook Pro microphone or even AirPods if you don't have an audio interface. A few other things I want to go ahead and set right off the back. I'm going to set my device block size to 512 samples. That'll tie in in a little bit when we talk about latency. Latency is the process of the audio being able to spit back out to you in real time. Uh, there is a delay. There will always be some sort of delay when we're having to sing into a microphone. That microphone is being translated to digital numbers and stuff, and then it's being spit back out to you in your speakers or your headphones. There will always be some sort of delay. Now, how extreme that delay is will come down to your block size, your sample rate and the power of your computer to spit it back out. But for the most part, you should be okay with 512 samples. And then I'm personally recommending that you stick to 48 kilohertz when it comes to recording music. If you change the sample rate, your project file sizes will get much larger. You can go up to 96K if you want to, but that will be roughly twice the size of 48 kilohertz. So just stick with 48K, it's debatable the perceptible difference between 48k and 96k it's totally up to you if you want to go 96k you certainly can now on the processing tab i'm going to set my dropout protection to be maximum again this will be dependent on what kind of audio interface and computer setup you have i'm gonna put this thing to the test with the scarlett 2i2 but i know for sure that with my apollo audio interface and this macbook pro m3 pro chip it's handled it quite well. So I'm gonna switch this thing to maximum. Processing precision, you can just set that to 32-bit, will be fine. I do not have enable plugin map nap turned on. I do have enable low latency monitoring for instruments. The big reason I've got dropout protection set to maximum is because it gives me access to this green Z switch known as the native low latency monitoring assistance, okay? So when we get to recording, You'll see me reach for this green Z switch. You'll hear me mention it quite often as we're tracking, as we're recording. That green switch is gonna help us whenever we're recording instruments and we're hearing that delay. We want things to be quicker. You need to turn that on, but then you also have to remember to turn it off if you make use of it, because when you mess around with plugins, if you forget that you have this thing turned on, you'll be messing with plugins and nothing seems to be making a difference. It's because it basically takes a snapshot and freezes your session in real time so that you can record a new track. It's very handy to have. So if that didn't make any sense, just copy all of my settings and you'll be good to go. So that is audio device. We have our interface set up, 512 samples, 48 kilohertz processing. We have dropout protection set to maximum, single 32-bit. We're going to click OK. So now at the bottom of the screen, you see setup. I can see my audio interface is selected should be good to go on that front. One more thing I want us to hit up before we start creating our first session. Go up to the top where it says Studio One, and then we're gonna to go to Studio One Activation. So obviously we need to activate our copy of Studio One. If you haven't done this already, go to Studio One Activation, click Activate My Purchased Version of Studio One if you purchase the perpetual version, or you have a license from maybe a product that you purchased somehow you wanna put the product key here. Cool thing is, if you have this link to your my.presonus.com account, it should have all of your product keys stored so that you don't have to retype in all of these keys. Now you're gonna not gonna be able to see my software key on the screen just for privacy reasons, but this is where I'm gonna enter my software key. I can click the drop down menu and I'll see all of my different keys right there. As Soon as you have that selected, make sure you click activate, then you will officially have your copy of Studio One installed. Now, if you've got added features that came with your copy of Studio One, it may not have installed everything 100%. That's because not everybody's computer has enough space for all this like bloated software. So I wanna walk you through the Studio One installations and make some recommendations on plugins and different software that I think is gonna be useful when you're recording. So go up to Studio One, then Studio One installation. From here, you can see available downloads. This will be linked to your PreSonus account. You may not see all of these things 
on your screen, but I'm gonna make some recommendations based off of what is available to me. Of course, you can go through and you can change this from minimal installation. You can click full installation if you wanna just download every single thing that they have. Personally, I don't recommend that to you. It's just gonna be overwhelming with the amount of stuff. Uh, I highly enjoy the Artist Instrument Library. Uh, ever since I've had version three of Studio One, the Artist Instruments, they're not like the most realistic sounding thing ever, but if you're just looking for that added track, like you need a tambourine or you need a snare drum hit, something that's gonna be blended into the rest of your tracks, I think the Artist Instrument Library is good to have. It's gonna give you things like basses, synthesizers, keyboards, drums, percussion, all the stuff that you may not have available to you in your studio. Uh, I don't recommend that you download any of the demos or documentation. The Impact Drum Kits is good to have. Uh, Impact Drum Kits is basically the drum samples. You'll get some that sound very tribal or things that sound very unnatural. Uh, that's useful to use. Uh, loop libraries might be interesting to you. Uh, it's 10 gigabytes of information, but if you're working in like podcast world, Loop libraries is gonna give you some pre-made stuff it's not super unique sounding, but if you need something, you can download the loop libraries. I've got this one that's the PreSonus Symphonic Orchestra. Might be pretty good. I'm not going to download it for this session, but if you need a orchestra type sound, you can download that as well. Uh, the Presence XT Studio Grand will certainly come in handy, so I'm going to go ahead and download that. That's basically a grand piano. The Splice integration, it's up to you if you want to use Splice. It is a subscription plan, so it's going to be on top of whatever you're paying for normally. Uh, stem separation, I'm not too interested in that at the moment. But those are the things I'm going to highly recommend you check out the Artist Library, the Impact Drum Kits, and then the Studio Grand. Basically the stuff that is unique to PreSonus Studio One. As I mentioned earlier, my software, when it was installing Studio One, it had 859 plugins and virtual instruments to install. I've got a lot of third-party stuff. If you're interested in any of that sort of content, I highly recommend you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash heychrisgreen. I'll do videos on different third-party elements, but for this series of videos, I wanna stick with as much of the stuff that comes with PreSonus Studio One so that you're not having to go off and make some extra purchases beyond what you normally would. So those are the things I'm going to recommend as soon as you have those selected. It looks like I've got 8.5 gigabytes of stuff to install. I'm simply going to hit install and that will get started running in the background. Now, while that stuff is downloading, it's worth mentioning that I've got everything set to default as far as the destination for my audio recording. So if I open up a finder window, if I go to my documents folder, I should now have a Studio One folder. And within Studio One, this is where all of my session files are going to be installed. So when we go to create a new session, a session would be whatever song you're working on. We're gonna be recording a song called Where I Come From. It's gonna be a folder. That folder will be automatically created in my documents folder within documents in my Studio One folder. There'll be a Studio One folder called Songs, and within Songs, I have where I come from. It's totally up to you. If you want to save some space on your internal drive, when you're creating a new song, I'll show you the process, but you can actually select an external drive if you want to record to a flash drive or something that you can take with you different places. It's totally up to you, but by default, everything's going to go to your My Documents folder. So like I said, while this stuff is downloading in the background, we are essentially primed and ready to start recording. I trust you've gone through the gear guide. You've got a few microphones available. You've got your audio interface. Now you have Studio One set up and you're ready to start recording. I'll see you on the next video and we'll get started. Now there are many, many other videos here on my channel other than the Recording Academy, but make sure you check the playlist for Recording Academy for more lessons as they're being uploaded. YouTube is recommending this video just over my shoulder, so give that one a watch and I'll see you at the next video.